perfect. Um, so certainly we will um, hope to cover all of your business related questions today. However, if you do have any questions for us that um, we're just not covering, please feel free to type that in um, or you can always email the email us at support at crelate.com, but we'll try to do a good job at covering a lot of your inquiries today. Now, um, this is just going to be the guidelines for how uh, we're going to go through this presentation today. So we'll start by some tips and tricks um, best practices for managing your sales pipeline. We'll go into best practices for managing some of those reports. And then we'll end with some security and user roles. Some people on my team just focus on the business development side or they're just doing recruiting and so they don't need to see the sales side and how to better uh, configure and tailor each person's experience and relate to the administrator's liking here. And so uh, without further ado, we'll just get started here and pull this in for you. Um, what I am going to pull in is a test database. So some things on my end might look a little bit different than yours. Um, but if you have any questions on custom reports or diving in deep, um, we also have, um, have done webinars on those as well. So right now, this is the sales tab. Um, it's configured for me to manage all of my prospective opportunities. Um, and on my sales tab, you see all of my leads and prospective opportunities that I'm working here within my workflow stages. And these are lead, initial reach out, qualification. There's some prospecting stages right before it is open for recruiting. Now, one of the first um, best practices that I want to mention, so best practice number one, is going to be manage your custom opportunities through quick tiles and visualizations. So a lot of times the best way to quickly see the information you would want to gather is to create these tiles to do so. Now, if you're someone who says, I do consulting opportunities, but I also do executive recruiting, or I do permanent placement, but occasionally I also do some temp or contract work, um, not only from a reporting perspective, but also just from a managing leads perspective, it's great if you can delineate those with two separate opportunity types. So I would recommend going in your settings area and creating a different opportunity type for your different types of positions. So I have my consulting positions, my jobs and my prospects, even my MPC searches here. And so when I'm looking at my leads here, at any given time, I can say, just show me my full-time positions here. Just show me my consulting positions or just show me my temp jobs. And so these quick filter tiles allow me to really quickly pull in the information that's most important to me at any given time. Now with these quick filter tiles, um, all you'll have to do is go to the cogwheel in the top left hand, right hand corner here. And then right underneath filters, you'll see configure quick filter tiles. Now, I know there are some of you out there that are really loving tags to categorize your different opportunities. So you can definitely create one for tags as well. Um, I can say, I wanna show, bring in one, but since I'm using my tags, I'm going to say a new custom filter. And that new custom filter can be of tags. And then you can utilize your tag to say, only show me certain opportunities that had this tag or that do not have this tag, um, just so you can manage that appropriately with your quick filter tiles there. Um, so tip number one is going to be utilize those quick filter tiles. Um, also those visualizations here. So right now my tiles are colored by last activity date. So we'll see in this filter bar here, last activity date. And so really taking advantage of coloring your tiles and visually really quickly being able to go into a page and see who do I need to reach out to. You know, I'm looking at this and the people who are green, I haven't reached out to them in a while. So let me go into their record and maybe click to dial to call someone from this database or send an email to my point of contact here. 
Now my second tip for you guys in terms of the sales tab um, is going to be related to using projects when necessary. So if you're working with the same company and there's a group of jobs that you're looking to place, um, or maybe you're placing jobs for the same event that might be happening or um, the same department of a specific company, um, take advantage of grouping those opportunities in tiles. Um, in projects. Um, the flexibility of grouping them in projects will give you the ability from a financial standpoint to say, show me the amount of all of these jobs together or separate them. And so when I click on either of my project tiles here, I can have different opportunities here that have different potential values and actual values. So I will have the ability and financial tracking to say, track a group of opportunities together or separately. I mean, you can have them together on your tiles here, or you can unseparate them. Um, so projects just give you more flexibility to have better grouping of different opportunities that you're placing at the same time most primarily use uh, different opportunities being placed for the same company within the same time frame. Um, tip number three is going to be to really take advantage of automating the system. So if I'm moving people to different stages by clicking and dragging, having the system work with me. You don't want to have to do duplicate steps. I don't want to move someone to a workflow stage and then have to go fill out a form. I want to easily be able to drop someone into a workflow stage and have that generate different forms for me and different information that I want to track at any given time. And so you can set up within your settings, within your sales workflow opportunities to have the ability to move someone to a particular stage. And then after they're moved to that stage, it's going to generate um, different activities to occur. Um, that can mean I want, and I'll show you an example here, I'll move this job to my initial outreach stage. And at that point, it's asking me what type of job this is, because I created this lead as a no type. So I'll say this is going to be a bunch of my temp jobs. And then it automatically presents me a form to fill out. You know, if I'm moving them to this outreach stage, I'm having that outreach conversation. And if I scroll down, I can track some of the information that I want to record at this time. But the great part is I didn't have to move them to that stage and then click into the opportunity and then click on an activity. But once I do one thing, the system is prompting me to do another. And then from here, um, one of my last ones, but sort of the most important out of all this, is I'm managing my leads and I'm automating my process and I'm using quick filter tiles to help me filter between information that's pertinent to me at any given time. Um, another tip for this, um, before I move to the last one, is I know that we get a lot of feedback from people that are saying, Sometimes I use the sales tab for opportunities, but sometimes I'm just using them as call list. I have a bunch of people who are just contacts and I don't even know if I'm gonna have a job from them yet. So I have a mixture of people who I'm calling um, to see if they will have a job and hopefully it turns into a job to actual leads that are jobs. Um, and so in that case, using these quick filter tiles are nice because then you can say, only show me my leads who are contacts and not even jobs yet, or show me my leads that are certain job type. And so you can configure these towards um, the information you wanna see at any given time. But that last tip there is going to be to make sure that you are inputting your predictive data to get better reports. So everything you do is going to update and generate these reports on the right hand side of your screen here. So just making sure you're really diligent and in including information, information such as the potential value, estimated close date, and probability. And even probability is something you can automate. So you can say, for my team, if we get a job into the prospect stage, there's a 75% chance that we're going to cl close that position. So every opportunity that's placed in that stage automatically 
have that opportunity adopt the probability of 75%. But certainly as you guys are just adding these um, leads into the system here, make sure you put in a potential value if you know it or estimated close date. At the time of creating it, if you don't know that information, at any time you can single select these opportunities and set things such as potential value, estimated close date, as well as probabilities here. Now your reporting, um, you are going to get expected value per stage um, and you'll see per each of your custom workflow stages that you have here. You also can get total expected value and total potential value. So the differences between those is total potential value is what you, the exact potential value that you're, you are inputting for all of these opportunities. It just adds up all those potential values. Total expected value is going to be the potential value multiplied by the probability that you've set for that position. Um, and that is going to give you that amount. And then average time per stage, value one over time. Of course, if you select this cogwheel here, you can um, alter these reports to change it into quarters or months or show different estimates for yourself. I um, mean, what I really like to measure for my business development team is this fall off. What place are we losing opportunities? What workflow stage? Maybe we need to uh, pay more attention or have more touches with people in this stage so we're not losing as many opportunities within that stage. Um, before um, we dive deeper into reports here, um, I will generate a poll while we can ask some questions. Um, so Ian, are there any questions? There are a few questions, uh, a couple that specifically pertain to reports. So as Brittany pointed out, uh, we will just be getting to those in a moment here. So you can definitely feel free to stay, stay in touch and stay on board as we transition to the reports. Uh, Brittany, another quick question that had popped up was in regards to the custom forms piece. So you had showed the drag and drop where you moved an opportunity to a stage which prompted a form. Uh, a couple people just had a quick question in regards to where those forms are actually created. Awesome, and I can show that um, now. And now I am going to just end this polling and share these results with you guys. Um, one thing to note here for those of you that are not currently utilizing that CRM side and not tracking your sales and perspective opportunities, um, we do have a more in-depth video on how to customize your workflow stages and manage your leads and create all of these customizations. Um, so if you check our help desk and just put in our um, sales CRM webinar, you'll see that there. And so that can help you guys um, give you examples of different workflow stages and activities and different things you can track um, if this is the first time you guys are tracking those perspective opportunities. Um, but to show you where we do those custom forms, if you go over to your settings area, and please note you will have to be an administrator to have access to this. If you scroll down, you will see our custom form section. And this is where you can create those different activity forms here. And then after that activity form is created, you can always go to a, your activity section and say, every time this activity is completed, pull in a certain form. And you can have that default activity template. Now this will allow you, even if someone is on a record and they don't do the click and drag, once they click that activity, it will populate this form. And then the last step is just to go to your workflow stage and say, every time I move someone to this stage, configure rules for this stage, generate that activity. Awesome. Um, I Will, um, if there are any more questions, I'll be sure to answer them right now in chat. Um, and I'm going to quickly pass this over um, to Ian right now so he can continue on a more in-depth dive on reports while I answer some of the questions that you guys have um, regarding sales. Awesome. Well, thanks, Brittany, for that presentation. So yeah, we'll be kicking it over and discussing uh, a little bit into the report side and then a little bit into some of the security as well. So I'm just going to um, kind of continue and pick up uh, right where Brittany left off. All right. So first discussion, we're actually going to go into the reports and we're going to specifically highlight the opportunity-based reports. 
So with your opportunity tracking, um, basically we're gonna kind of follow up in what Brittany had discussed on the little widget reports that you saw over to the right of your screen. So the intent there is to give a quick display of just some brief data and information like Brittany touched on with the capability to see total and expected value, the time to close. So just some quick little nuggets and widgets just for you to view without actually leaving the screen. Now the full reporting module will actually also contain an opportunity-based tracking. So you can track everything from your revenue to activity by user, by company. There's all different ways in which you can actually mold and build reports based on specifically what you'd like to see. So I've gone in and created a few examples that we can highlight. So we'll detail not only those examples, but also how you can actually build and create your own custom reports. So for starters, just on my main opportunities sales pipeline. I've actually favorited this opportunities, so it will be one of the top that shows up. Uh, I've just tracked some quick big picture items. So my, my general revenue pipeline of what kind of value is sitting in each stage, where we are from an opportunity tracking standpoint in regards to how many opportunities we are creating over time, uh, a little value pipeline forecast, so I can see, you know, at what point um, does, you know, at what kind of revenue does June need to be at in order to produce a successful month? If I'm at 36K now for June and 31K for July, what does that forecast kind of set me up for? What, what as a result does the actual value look like? So you can use these forecasting options to ultimately build better pipeline and better forecast reports from a sales, ex uh, sales perspective. We see popular, you know, an owner setup. So I can see, well, it looks like clearly Ian's been hitting the phones and really trying to generate business from a sales side. And maybe these other individuals are, you know, maybe they go uh, half and half sales and recruiting, or maybe they're more just focused on recruiting solely. So you can build a report based on your sales team to track revenue. And then which companies are bringing in the most revenue? You know, it looks like ABC Inc. Uh, we can even see what filters. I've actually added a quick filter uh, with a min and max value, but clearly they're bringing us a lot of revenue. Is this a client we you know, maybe need to continue to highlight and continue to reach out to to make sure that we have formulated a good relationship and can continue to progress uh, with new opportunities going forward? So it just gives you the capability to segment you know, really which client is ultimately bringing in the most business, so then hopefully you can divert you know, a good bit and majority of your attention. So other popular reports that we often see are reports that focus on your team. So obviously you'd like to track, you know, not only the metrics of how many calls are we making, but also from a pipeline perspective of where does each individual sales lead an opportunity focus within our funnel. So we'll, we'll use this for some kind of mock reporting. So I'll configure some of these pages. I'll add some additional just so we can get a quick highlight and overview. So I've created a few little side-by-side. -side. Uh, first one is just all opportunities by sales stage. The second, I've actually narrowed it down. So it's opportunities by sales stage that are recent opportunities, so they must have an activity this month, and they also must be of a potential value of $20,000 or more. That way, if I want to filter out maybe some of the clutter up above where we have 28 here and 19 here, I filtered it down only to show me our more in-process stages, so I'm not showing what's already been hired or what's already been uh, closed internally or lost. I really just want to focus more on our pipeline. So I like to highlight just those stages that are in progress, that are recent, and that are worth a high value. So again, this can accompany the last report we were looking at, and I can actually target that, great, it looks like we have about 10 positions that are in flight and prospecting right now. Maybe even further, I want to add an additional filter. So while this report is great, all I really care about right now is the month of June. Obviously, the 1st of June is just upcoming this weekend, and I need to know for my business what of these positions that are valuable to us are actually going to close. So there's a ton of filters you can choose from. I had already chosen the opportunity sales stage, which we saw, the activity date, which is under our dates field. You have an option for last activity. But further, we have a whole slew of value-based fields. So whether I'm pulling in the actual value, expected value, or in this case, we actually may want to pull in some you know, other fields. Maybe I'd like to pull in if the job has been published or not, or have we included this on a list? So you have many options when it comes to your different filters. Uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna pull in the estimated close date because I'd just like to see what we think we're going to close. We'll say in a custom date range, because I'd like to see this from June 1st 
to the 30th of the month. And now we know it's just that one position and it's in our initial outreach stage. I can further, if I actually wanna see that specific position from the screen, I can do so. So I don't even need to leave. If I were to configure the chart, so we've added the columns, I have it broken down by, by sales stage and then by user, but you can add additional columns on top of what we already have. So we've added our filters, you know, we've got our set list of what we're narrowing down this report by, but I can also configure the chart itself to group this report differently. So right now, again, we're grouping by sales stage and by owner, but perhaps I'd actually like to add an additional group by company or maybe by the opportunity type. In this case, we'll just choose the company. So now I can see by expanding this that this is actually for ASIC. So the position that's worth over $20,000 that has a projected close date of June that also has recent activity is actually for ASIC, the company. So now I know who that is, who Ian needs to target and reach out to in order to make June a successful month. So there's just a lot you can do, not only from a visual, but also from a filter perspective. Of course, anytime you make any changes, you can always save these reports. That way they'll continue to update dynamically for you as you continue to add different projects and opportunities that match this criteria. So whether you're big on tracking overall pipeline, maybe just valuation by user, so I can track across each stage where the revenue is and where the projected and potential revenue is, and then across all stages by time. So I can actually see right now a little bit of in line with the report that we just kind of mock customized above, but now I can see across the board potential value across all stages. Well, June looks like uh, about 18K, 25 in July, 30 in December. So you can just kind of um, continue to see not only from a previous perspective, but also future facing, uh, whether you're looking you know, at past data or present. Uh, the last one that I had built was just a potential value that is within a specific stage. So again, sort of like the report that we just configured up above, I can view the companies that we're focusing on. We see ASIC comes up worth about 45K in revenue, just so I can again target those specific companies. So you can easily build reports within the dashboard here just by adding charts to the page. That ultimately gives you the capability to use drop downs. You know, maybe we're gonna focus on another opportunity-based report because I'd like to see expected value by sales stage for a little funnel-based report or maybe by company. So I know which companies bring us in the most revenue. And then once you have your report, uh, you can use the same principles applied where you're adding your filters and configuring not only from a column perspective, but also visually I can always change how a column, a pivot grid, you know, you name it, you can pretty much set up your uh, Brittany to see if we Awesome. So we did have some questions um, just regarding um, making sure that um, everyone is able to access everything. We do have some questions for some people who cannot see the configure chart option. Um, this is most likely because you are not on our business subscription tier. Um, however, if you reach out to support at Crelate.com, we can certainly um, help upgrade your package so you can have the best reports for your firm. Great, any other questions then, Brittany? I think we're good right now, but I know there are probably a few of you that have some other questions. So certainly, please feel free to type in some of those report questions that you might have right now, and we can certainly assist you with that. Um, now, the other thing that we'll wanna cover, um, and Ian can certainly answer um, some of these questions for you, as we go through the system here, but we're going to go into security. Um, and so we do always get a lot of questions regarding, this is great and I like that you have all these features, there's a lot you can do with reports, but I don't want all users to access those reports and I don't want everyone to have access to the sales tab. And so as long as you are an administrator, if you go to the settings tab and then scroll down, 
you are going to see underneath security user roles. And this is where you can configure what each person can see and do within your database. Now, at the top, you will see the different types of user roles. And on our business package, you do have the flexibility to create any custom user role you would like. So if you have a contractor or an intern, or if you wanna segment your low-level recruiters to some of your senior, more seasoned recruiters. Um, and there's different access and different views that people are able to take advantage of based upon their role. You can select the plus sign and create that. So this can be for my contractors. Or it can be, you know, for my business development people. Now, once you select saves at the top, you will be allowed to save that new user role. And then below, determine what people in this user role can see or do. Now, if I select this drop down on contacts, I can say what people in this user role can do regarding my contacts. Now, hovering over each option here, you will see on the right, it will give you a breakdown of what this means. So none means they cannot view contacts at all. Read means they can only have a read-only access to contacts. Edit will give them the ability to read, create, and update contacts, just not delete any contacts. And then full will give them the option to also delete them. So maybe I don't want them deleting any contacts, um, but they can certainly edit the salary fields and move people to different job board stages. Um, they shouldn't delete anything in the database. I'm just going to put that on edit. Now, one of the cool tricks that a lot of people like to do is occasionally I get people who say, I'm also using Crelate to source people for my internal team. And I want to be able to create that potential candidate for our team here and record notes, but I do not want everyone on the team here seeing the value what we're giving them in terms of a salary and seeing how much um, of a percentage of commission do they get or even seeing the interview notes. And so you can certainly create a custom activity called something like admin notes where you as an administrator can put on notes and then give it a none access to all your other recruiters. So you can privately put notes on records that everyone won't be able to see. But here, I can determine for each of these activities what I would like people to be able to see and do and what they cannot do. Underneath that will be your document type. So if you have things like contracts that you do not want everyone seeing or certain documents, you can certainly uh, not give them access to view those specific things. Um, so I can hide some of these I-9s and fee agreements, but give them access to some of these other things that will align to their daily activities. Now, one of the most important things I always recommend people do is if someone does not need to export, keep that on no. There's no harm in removing the ability to export data from your database and possibly siphon your information off. Now, if someone ever comes to you and says, hey, I need to export, you can always turn that on for them tempor temporarily and then turn them back off. Um, but things like exporting, you might want to proceed on the side of caution. You can also do so in terms of ownership, submittals, viewing that sales board, and if they need access to that, um, access to reports, maybe on a read-only basis, maybe they don't need to actually export those reports. Um, and then that audit log is going to be a section of reports that gives you a more microscopic view of what each user is doing in your database. So if you are on our business tier, you do have the option of having an audit log, and it will be the last option on your reports. And this will give you a deep dive of what each person can see and do in your database. So I can see um, when each user has logged on or logged off or what records are they on, are they deleting information or importing information. I um, mean, you can filter that on the right hand side as you do the other reports as well. So with that um, audit log, um, for all of you guys who maybe don't have that audit log but are on our business tier, just underneath security and the settings area, go to advanced security, and here you can turn on your audit log if need be.
Um, so going back to those user roles, you can determine for each role, um, you can even do that per user if you would like, what each person can see and do in the database. And once that user role is created, if you go to users here, you can select any of your users and determine the role that they are going to have. Now, if someone is an administrator, they will not be given the option to give them a role as admins will have full access. So they will have to be um, not an admin to be able to set that role. Um, and then the other just advanced security things while we're here, I am seeing some questions on that, is going to be two-factor authentication. So if someone tries to log in um, and they're putting in the wrong credentials, it will lock down that account. And then you can decide to have that person have to enter, they'll be texted a number and they'll have to enter a code. They'll also be emailed a code that they'll have to enter. And then after they pass, um, the, with the correct texting information and email information, they'll be let back into that account. You also can force a strong password. And then the last one is IP access rules. Um, this is not utilized as often, certainly popular with more of our uh, government related um, recruiters here, but it will allow you to lock down where people are able to access that data. So if someone is not, um, only want people to access it at the office and only certain users can access their Creely environment from home, you can approve the IP addresses that people will be able to access the database in. Um, I will pause here. Any additional questions, Ian? Yeah, there's a quick question that came through surrounding the report. So we had talked a little bit about the report customization and how you can you know, hide and display privileges. Um, but Brittany, if you do go to that opportunity report and then click the this report drop down over to the far right. So something that's pretty cool when you actually build a report, you see you can or cannot have the option to share that. So if you are creating an individual report, so let's say you want your full team to have access to reports, but you'd also like to create maybe a little placement or commission report that of course you don't want everyone to see. Once you do use the plus sign to create that report, you can choose whether or not that's something you'd like to remain internal or whether you'd like to display that to the team. So even on your own unique individual reports, you'd have the capability to keep those internal and private just to yourself and not to your non-administrative users. Awesome. Um, any other um, questions here? I'll give you some time to answer, ask any questions regarding the sales tab, security, managing other users, our reports tab. Um, and while those questions are coming in, we will just have another uh, poll for you guys really quickly here. Awesome, I see a lot of um, raised hands. Um, but while uh, we'll get, we're getting in those last questions from you guys, um, our poll is just regarded, related to what topic you would like us to cover next. Um, so if you select other, just feel free to type into us what topic you think that you could have better support on and we'll certainly keep this in mind. Yeah, as Brittany said, we definitely wanted to, you know, keep these uh, webinar series for the Create Classroom as kind of the reports, the the pulse of our user and customer base. So obviously, we want to benefit, uh, you know, benefit you guys the most by what topics we're bringing into to display and bringing on board here for the webinar. So of course, your feedback is definitely welcomed. That way, we'd have the capability to, you know, really target the next webinar and future webinars to the, you know, specific hot topic of the time. Awesome. And for anyone who um, is really, really wants a specific topic um, to be mentioned, if you can just put that into a chat to us and we'll certainly keep that in mind. So if you have questions on um, not only importing data, but specifically importing leads into spreadsheets or pulling people in from LinkedIn um, on search, if your main question is best practices in utilizing filters. You can put some of those in just to make sure that we are covering all the things that you guys are interested in. And just showing you this poll here, um, I see a lot of people are interested in search and importing data. Um, also some um, that have some questions on all of our search functionality. Anyone that said other, um, we will check this chat if you just type in some of the other topics that are important to you. Um, any last minute questions, Ian?
Uh, we did have uh, one quick question that came through uh, specifically about kind of splits and reports. Uh, so we'll just reach out here. Um, but basically, yes, you do have the option to actually create split reports if you'd like to kind of have a segmented report based on the, um, you know, kind of commissions or earnings of individual users. So that is a capability. Um, it would just involve a custom placement form. But we'll actually send out some documentation here after the call. Awesome. Um, and I do see a lot of great. Um, questions and things that you want us to cover so we'll definitely keep that in mind um, one question is is there a way to have some specific reports available for team members to view if you do not want them to see everything um, that's a great question and certainly um, that's going to go back to sharing that report so um, a lot of times I would recommend creating your own tab up here so you can just select the plus sign and create another tab maybe it's going to be recruiting teams report to business development reports or your company's names reports and then within this tab you can have your own sub tabs of all the reports that are important to you now I would share that report with your non-administrators so even if you have them with a security setting of read only they're still able to see those reports that you want to make sure that um, everyone is being aware of here um, any other i'm going through two as well ian but any other um, questions that you see that would be great no, one other question was uh, just asking if this would be recorded. So this definitely will be recorded. We'll actually send you uh, an email message here tomorrow afternoon with a recorded version. It will be uploaded to our help page along with the other Crelate classrooms. So should you like a deeper dive into reports or should you like a deeper dive into the CRM, we actually have pre-recorded webinar series that we've uh, hosted that will touch on those topics. And of course, you can check out this one as well. Perfect. Um, so certainly this will be recorded for you um, and I will definitely make sure to send that out to everyone um, and we will be sure to consider everyone's feedback on certain topics that you guys would be interested in and um, we'll certainly make sure in our upcoming webinars that we include those. But we thank you all for taking the time out today. We really appreciate um, you guys spending your afternoon with us and all of the feedback you gave us. Um, certainly we will incorporate that, but we hope you have a great rest of the week.